The gang has been called in early to the max, and it seems that this will be another holdover episode from the freshman season, but you can tell from the younger faces, as well as that Screech is back to pining after Lisa. Uh, Screech, I think you forgot your clothes. Lisa, I didn't want you to see me this way until our honeymoon. Yeah, continuity issues will abound here, but we're going to choose to ignore them because Kelly brought a freaking baby to school. So let's all just swallow our this is a fun show for kids with a wacky premise pills and enjoy the show. This is Billy, who rounds out the Kapowski family. My parents got snowed in at the ski lodge. I gotta babysit Billy till they come home. What? Kelly's got three older brothers at home. None of them could have taken Billy for the day? Why did it have to be her? Oh, is it because she's a girl? Is this some sexist thing we need to unpack? I cured racism in the last video. I can solve sexism here. I'm sorry, what, dear? I'm virtue signaling way too hard? Uh-huh. Kelly likely has the kid just so this episode could happen. Oh, I'll, um, I'll turn it down a few notches. It's yearbook picture day, and Kelly has cheerleading pictures during the first hour. Shouldn't Lisa also have cheerleading pictures? Well, the kids play hot potato with the baby without dropping him, which is frankly amazing. And I'm sorry, but Billy's existence is forcing a Kapowski family discussion. First off, what happened to Kenny Leonard being the youngest? My youngest brother can say his full name, Kenny Leonard Kapowski, in one burp. While House Party aired before The Babysitters in the 10th grade season, the Babysitters was produced as part of the ninth grade season. The writers should have remembered that an episode with a Kapowski baby was already in the can before they even wrote the Kenny Leonard burping joke. In addition, Kelly is ambiguously 15 or 16, which means her older brothers, if they're triplets, are at least 17-ish. Well, that's 17 down to 7 months. If the boys aren't triplets, that means the oldest could be around 20 or 21, that is quite the range in ages. Mr. Kapowski just doesn't know when to quit. Then again, it's clearly not his genes producing the Kellys and Nickies of the family. So I don't know if I can blame him for continuing his relations with the Kapowski family master mold. For probably the first time in his life, Zack isn't able to avoid taking on a responsibility. And he takes that responsibility, in a duffel bag, straight to French class. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Madame Air, which means egg in French. Now, just a petite review before the quiz. Remember your pronunciation. The R in English is the R en français. <laughs> because Zach mimicking Billy is comedically perfect French, the class is to copy Zach, which goes on way too long and... Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and then, because teachers have no power at Bayside... Emergency, I, I gotta go. Uh, emergency, I gotta go. Class, where are you going? We find out that Kelly broke her arm and that this baby plot is going to stretch out longer. Wait. If this is a holdover episode, does that mean we're going to see- Gosh dang it! It's freaking Max! The yearbook staff asked me to be their photographer. It's my hobby. <laughs> Adults and their hobbies. Max doing photography gets him in this episode. Mr. Testaverde's hobby of plumbing ruins Zach's midterm scheme. And my hobby of making Save by the Bell videos makes it so my wife won't look me in the eye during master mold time. For some reason, Billy's getting fussy. Hey, well, you know, maybe he's hungry or something. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, I've got a ding dong in my gym bag. Why do you have an unwrapped ding dong in your gym bag, Slater? The boys realize that Billy has done the unimaginable, made the locker room smell worse. Time for an on screen diaper change. But first, let's do some asides. <laughs> what are you looking at, something, Mancuso? <laughs> First off, we learn that this dapper pirate is named Mancuso. Second, we get another reminder that this is an episode from last season and that Zack's track uniform is reverted. Lastly, notice how Slater's wrestling singlet is all nice and tight. Yeah, you do. 
but also how Mancuso's is pretty loose around the sides. My theory is that Wardrobe only has the two singlets, and Mancuso is stuck wearing Screech's singlet from the Pinned to the Mat episode. Alright, back to Broke Butt Billy. Zack and Slater break character, and then fight over who gets to do the honors, and end up ripping the last diaper. Are we sure that's a diaper? It's massive! And where are the tabs? What is that thing? Slater bounces, and Zack decides to use Slater's shirt as a makeshift diaper. But not before flashing some baby butt in dong. Ask me about my winner! Man, what was up with early 90s baby penises? Billy was played by an unknown set of twins, and I wonder if they feel as bad about their infant exposure like the Nevermind Baby did. Zack's connection to Billy gets him all daydreamy about having his own kid one day. This is sweet and all, but what is that crumpled paper grocery sack background? Zack finally gets to hand Billy off, but listen to him break character. <laughs> Zack. Oh, come on, look. If I'm not back before the end of your class, <laughs> I'll... You see, when a baby is being passed, the receiver's job is to establish support so that the giver can retract before things get awkward. Young Zack learns this lesson the fun way by lingering too long and getting stuck between a billy and a boob. It's a charmed life you'll lead, my boy. Fortunately for Jesse and Lisa, today's home economics class is all about baby care. Holding your baby any other way could make it very uncomfortable. <laughs> See? Now that could hurt, baby. <laughs> Way to give those practical life lessons, Mrs. Hatcher. Mac shows up to take the home ec pictures. First off, Jessie's a friggin' giant. Why isn't she in the back? She's totes blocking the Zeffirelli twins. Second, why isn't the teacher in the picture? Screech shows up, and the girls end up faking a cheer to direct him to Billy. Move it to the left! Move it to the right! Further to the right! Not there! Yes, there! You got it! You got it! Fight! 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 And I think Screech needs to take this class because he clearly doesn't know how to carry a baby. I mean, this is how I imagine it would have looked like if Rumpelstiltskin had taken the Miller's daughter's baby. And is it any surprise that Screech got the wrong baby? Then again, Screech clearly doesn't know what he's doing, so how should he know he was led to the wrong stroller by both Jesse and Lisa? He's an only child! He doesn't know how much babies weigh! What the crap? Why is Mr. Belding's door labeled as the home ec class? Has that not always just been the principal's office? Come to think of it, this wishy-washiness could explain why Screech went the opposite direction to Belding's office in that other holdover episode. Zach, what are you going to tell Kelly if we don't find him? I'll worry about that later. <laughs> Welcome to later. Yay! Kelly's back in the episode! But understandably, she wants her little brother. Good thing Mac shows up to distract Kelly while the gang... Ugh, does zany locker searches for a baby. I think my This is a Fun Show for Kids with a Wacky Premise pill is wearing off. Cause I kinda hate this. The gang hears baby babbles on the PA system and find Billy in Mr. Belding's office. But well, what are all of you doing in my office? Uh, well, Lisa and Jesse had the baby in home ec and they were supposed to... <laughs> Where did that come from? Well, the gang is kind of in a tough spot. For one, they don't want Kelly thinking they lost her brother. Also, they don't want to get in trouble by Belding for hiding a baby at school. Seems like it'll be a bit difficult getting out of this pickle. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, have you heard of something called... Gaslighting? Because that's what they do. They convince Belding that he is losing his memory. That's funny, I don't remember losing my memory. <laughs> well, that's the first sign of old age. Wait a minute. Yes! Yes, I remember everything now. And so clearly. Oh. Thank goodness that worked. But what was that ping sound? Wait a minute. Yes! The episode is nearly over, but not before the show reminds us that Zack and Kelly weren't exclusive when it was filmed. And then Billy says his first word. Oh, he can't talk yet. Yeah. <laughs> 
But also, good thing Billy wasn't with Slater all day. Hey, don't worry, Kelly, I'll get him to stop. <laughs> Yo, kid, give it a rest! <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, we don't know the names of the twins who played Billy, but we do know who stood off camera and made all of Billy's noises. <laughs> oh, he can't talk yet. <laughs> Billy's voice was done by Tom Williams, an actor who made a career out of making baby noises a skill he picked up as a teenager. As a bit of fun trivia, he returns in an episode of The New Class to voice Mr. Belding's son. What did Mr. Belding name his son again? <laughs> Mrs. Hatcher was played delightfully by Patrika Darbo. Oh, you've definitely seen her around. The Burbs, Troop Beverly Hills, Growing Pains, Step by Step, Seinfeld, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Bold and the Beautiful, or one of over 500 appearances in Days of Our Lives. An absolute delight on and off screen, Patrika frequently shares messages of body positivity and mentors others to embrace their true selves. She won an Emmy in 2016 for her work in Acting Dead. Mary Pat Gleason played Madame Oeuf, and she's another actor you have definitely seen in other things. Guiding Light, Full House, Steel Magnolias, Basic Instinct, Chuck, Bruce Almighty, and on and on and on. She also won an Emmy, but for writing on Guiding Light. Oh, and she was also in Troop Beverly Hills. I didn't ask for this, neither did you, but it's a necessary evil born out of my review. So keep your eyes glued to your preferred boob too, because class ain't over, no one's been excused. So here we are with True Beverly Hills. It's a surely long movie that lost millions of bills. It's a comedy, but no joke of Jack the Kills. As a rich lady chills with an octavic girl. You see, this lady loves fashion. She is divorcing stud Craggy T. She wants to bond with their offspring, the soon to be. Takes charge of a rich set of wilderness girls who very quickly find out they aren't part of that world. They go rogue and piss off and have a youthful kind of fun that cannot be ignored. At the jamboree, Brenda breaks a wrinkle and you know what does this have to do with Saved by the Bell? What? Oh, alright. The Babysitters is an episode of ladies you know from other shows. Mary Pat Gleason and Patrick Darbo, they shared the screen in another world. Mary Pat plays a lady who's just trying to be kind She's got her girls right behind in the crappiest line And Miss Darbo's getting bullied, she's just trying to be fine She kind of minds that she's yelled at all the time Newsflash! Heather Hopper's in this, taking us on back to Good Morning Miss Bliss The joke is she sees a therapist Fist missed, his pissed, and rapping's hard! I have another verse, Carla Gugino She's got ties to our favorite show Her parents sucked and that made her emo But she got better with some birthday cake, yo We get some new class, love with our boy Kareem We get Robin Leach, love who does Robin Screech And the girl playing the jerk Jamie is babyface Tori Spelling I don't know why there's so much ties to this picture I wish this song could have been about another feature I could forgive its flaws if you'll let me be a creeper If they gave more screen time to the smoke show Lisa <laughs> Sneaker. Oh my gosh, really scraping the bottom of the barrel there. Rapping's hard! 